We're going to move into our uh, time of meditation and conscious contact with the Lord of our being. So we invite you to relax, clear your laps, and breathe as we move into this time. We'll sing breathing, returning to the breath of God. into the stillness, into that secret place of the Most High. I invite you to breathe deeply, softening your belly, breathing in the pure essence of God and breathing out, letting go and letting God be God in you in this place, in this time, in this space. As we continue to breathe in, we breathe in the power the love, the light, the consciousness of God. And breathing out, letting go, even deeper and deeper, letting go, letting God be God in you at this time. Anything that you may have brought with you, any thoughts of judgment or fear or anxiety, we let them go with every exhale, breathing in the peace, the joy, the wholeness, the perfection of God in our lives and in our world. Allowing the body to relax even deeper so the mind can follow. I have faith in the goodness of God. I have faith in the goodness of God. And especially in these times of quiet reflection, I connect with God, with my higher power, with the Christ consciousness, with the divine essence of which I am created, the image and likeness of God, the image of light, the likeness of love, letting everything else fall away, 
coming deeper into this truth and this remembering of who I am. And so I come to believe in this power that guides my life, knowing that this power is greater than any challenge that I face, knowing that this power is the solution to any of my problems, knowing that this power is the grace in which I live and move and have my being. And it is my love of you, dear God, that strengthens my faith to know that all things are working for my highest and best, knowing that there is a divine outcome for everything, knowing that everything is working for our good. And so I invite you to find that idea of the goodness of God that comforts you. And to invite that idea and that energy into your awareness, maybe seeing it holding you as a, a friend, a hug from a, warm, from a friend, a warm hug from a friend. Is feeling that connection, that closeness, and that oneness with this divine energy. For the truth is, it is you. You are an expression of the divine. And so allow that outer expression to come deeper into your being to express as you. knowing that it's nearer than breathing, nearer than our hands and feet. It is wherever you are. So there's no searching outwardly for this divine presence that is within us right here, right now. Christ in you, your hope of glory. The Father and I are one. The Mother and I are one. The Divine and I are one. Not two. So knowing this, knowing this truth, my faith is beyond belief. My faith is knowing that God the good is working in my life now and always to bring about success, and love, and joy, and an abundance of all good things. I have faith in the goodness of God. I have faith in the goodness of God. Let us know this truth as we move deeper into the stillness into the sacred place of the Most High in the silence. as we take a deeper, more conscious breath, 
we slowly begin to bring our awareness back to this time and place with gratitude for having touched the stillness, even for this brief moment, to remember our oneness in God, to reassure ourselves of our faith and that this goodness is guiding our lives. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. As we sing again, returning to the breath of God. Breathing, I am alive. So in uh, August of 1998, I was driving from my house that I was renting up in uh, the foothills of the Cats, the uh, Pocono Mountains in Northwest New Jersey, Sussex County up on Kittatinny Lake. And uh, driving to my first Sunday as a new minister at Unity of Sussex County. And uh, it was about a 15 minute drive through the windy roads of that area. And I uh, came around a turn and there was a bus pulled over to the side and there were a bunch of people in orange jumpsuits picking up trash. That could have been me. But instead I was driving to be the minister of a church and uh, just in that moment, I just, everything that I had planned for that day kind of <laughs> went on the shelf because I had just realized how my faith, coming to believe in a power greater than myself, had changed my life in incredible ways. And it was with such gratitude that I had for what, for the changes that had happened in my life. Not only for the changes in my life, but also for the challenges that I had been through, that I had overcome as a result of uh, spirituality, spiritual practice, and spiritual principles. The first ones I learned through the 12-step program. 
And so today I want to share with you the uh, second principle of the 12 principles for spiritual living, which is faith, which is the principle of activating our faith in our lives. So, uh, it, you know, why, why do that? Why have faith? You know, I know why I have faith, because left to my own devices, most of the times I can't figure things out. Most of the time, I get myself in trouble if I'm not connected to that higher power. So when I do that, when I take the time to connect with that divine, with that wisdom, that my life usually turns out better than if I had done it without that. So Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of the Unity Movement, said that faith is the perceiving power of the mind linked with the ability to shape substance. The perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. So what is the substance that we're shaping? We kind of work backwards with this. The substance is the allness of God. Everything in the manifest, manifest realm came from consciousness. So the substance, the consciousness of God is what it is that, we are, that we've manifested to this moment, everything that we've experienced, the clothes we wear, the chair we're sitting on, the thoughts that we think, all come from the consciousness of God. And the more energy, the more we perceive what it is that we want, the more we form that in our lives and it shows up in our lives. Hebrews 11 says that faith is, Rabbi, uh, Reverend Bob, you wanna help me with that one? That's what you have to with. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to even look at, you like Charles' definition better. It's very similar. Faith is the perceiving power of the mind linked with the ability. I'm having faith in you right now because I can't find it. Uh, anyway, it's Hebrews 1.11 if you want to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, Einstein said, why remember anything? He didn't remember phone numbers because you could look them up. You know, why, why waste your brain? But it is part of my lesson, so I should have it. But it's it escaped me. <laughs> we'll get back to it. <laughs> but yeah, so I know a couple other things. I do remember another thing, a couple other things about faith. So faith is one of the 12 powers that Charles Fillmore taught that when we activate the energy of these 12 powers, that the Christ is present. So faith, love, understanding, uh, wisdom, elimination, and so on. When we have all of those activated, then we our Christ consciousness is activated and each one of those faith uh, principle or each one of those powers uh, rep is represented by one of the disciples and faith is represented by Peter and the color of faith is blue and the body center for faith is the pineal gland which is in the center of the brain which is also known as the gland of awakening when our pineal gland is awakened then we feel more present. We feel we have that God consciousness, that Christ consciousness. So there are all kinds of meditations and things that we do. As a yoga teacher, I've been learning this from, an, from another angle, that there are breath works and visualizations and different things that we do to physically activate these glands so that we can wake up. The yogis knew this stuff 10,000 years ago. And it's pretty cool that Charles Fillmore knew it you know, a hundred years ago or however long it's been since uh, he wrote these things. So the idea is that we have all the faith we are ever going to have. You can't get more faith, but what you can do is use it. You can activate it. And that's our spiritual work, right? To get in touch, to take the time to have faith in this higher power, this higher energy, this higher vibration that brings into our lives what it is we want to experience and how, and how we want to experience to the degree that we want to experience it. So 
you don't need a lot of it to change your life. Jesus said, all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. And with that amount of faith, you could tell a mountain to move and it will move. In other words, what, however big the challenge is, your faith will help you to get through to experience it in a new way, right? So uh, as many of you know, I have a daughter, she's 18 now, but when she was about nine years old and we were still living in Albuquerque, she used to go skiing with her friends and they'd take her up to Durango. And, and uh, so she was ready to go the next day, only she hadn't been feeling well and she had a little bit of a fever. And so I was telling her that, you know, you might not be able to go skiing tomorrow. And she said, Dad, why don't we just believe that I'll be better in the morning? <laughs> Unity minister's kid. And sure enough, in the morning, her fever was gone. And she got to go skiing. And I got a lesson. <laughs> Wonderful to get lessons from our kids. That's what they're here for. Which reminds us also what Jesus taught us about faith. It was the faith of little children that was the greatest demonstration of faith. And uh, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and, and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's not a difficult thing to do. It's more of a willingness. It's more of a surrender a surrender into faith, a surrendering into the truth, uh, the surrendering into knowing that all things are working for our highest and best. Jesus spoke about that often, let the little children come to me, but it's these that know the answer. So that calls us into a place of innocence, a, a place of openness, a place of wonder and mystery. That's why this lesson's called um, Believe in the Mystery. Because we don't really know the answer to how all this stuff works. But we know that it's good. We know that that mystery is good. There's a teaching that says that we only have about 20% control of our lives. We have control over about 20% of our lives, maybe, you know, what we put on in the morning, what we eat for breakfast. But we don't know what's going to happen when we go outside the door and who we're going to run into, the interactions that we're going to have and the lessons that we're going to learn. So the 80% of our lives is a mystery. 80% of our lives is a mystery. So the most important thing to know about that is that the mystery is good. The energy of the mystery is good. So the more that we believe in that mystery, the more goodness we have in our lives. And, and maybe that 20% starts to grow into 30% because we're trusting that mystery. And then we might feel like we have a little bit more mastery over our lives. I don't like to use the word control because I really am not in control of anything. But but to master our spiritual practices, to master the truth that God is in charge and to master the truth that, you know, when I don't know, I can let go and trust that mystery to show up in some way in a blessing. So there are many levels of faith. And of course, uh, hope is one of the... Uh, least strong expressions of faith. Faith, uh, hope is kind of just, you know, hoping that something good is going to happen, but it's not all bad because it gets us going in the right direction. Hope acknowledges that things might get better. It expresses a wish. And, you know, thank God for hope because there's so much struggle in the world and in our lives at times that sometimes if all we can muster up is some hope, uh, it can be a good thing. And it leads us to the next step, which is blind faith. 
And when we come here, it's more like everything will be okay, or God will provide. It's just kind of a, a little bit more than hope in having the faith that, that yeah, God's, God's involved and, and things are working for our good. And then we come into what we do here in unity is more of an understanding faith of understanding how faith works to build a greater understanding of our um, higher power to really connect and have a, have a greater understanding of what God is for us and how God works. So I know in my, uh, my healing and my early recovery, I didn't really get this second step that we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And, uh, I didn't understand what a power greater than myself was, even though I grew up in church. I didn't get much of that when I was younger. So I had to work on it. And fortunately, I had a really good sponsor who told me to go home and write down 10 qualities of my higher power. <sighs> I'd never even thought about that before. <laughs> it's like, what are the qualities of my higher power? You know, you, the brain goes into this religious thing. Okay, what is God? So I have to make God <clears throat> this or that. Excuse me, I need to get a drink of water. And I made that list and I took it to my sponsor and he read it and he handed it back to me. He said, well, there's your higher power. What do you mean? It's that simple? <laughs> and it was. And so here's how this works. So these are the qualities of my higher power, loving, forgiving, generous, sense of humor. Got to have a sense of humor and, uh, and so on. And here's, this is kind of working backwards because so many times in religion, we're told, believe in this, believe in Jesus, believe in Buddha, believe in Muhammad, believe in the way this has been written and, and everything will just come together. Everything will fall into place if you just do that. But if we, if we consciously resonate and, and identify the qualities of God that already resonate with us, they start to show up in our lives. When loving is one of, your, one of the qualities of God that you resonate with, you start to see more loving experiences in the world, more loving people in the world. And then eventually what happens is you find, oh, that's connected to this loving God. Jesus is all about love, right? And so, so it's a way, you know, maybe, you know, for people in early recovery who need to keep it simple, it's, a, it's kind of a neat way to do it. But if you struggle still with your concept of God or a higher power, you might try that to see how it works for you. So this is a, the understanding type of God that, um, that we're looking at in this step. And then, and then the, um, I found this piece I just wanted to share with you is someone else's ideas of a higher power. My higher power is to be much more powerful than my disease. Be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not just one hour on Sunday. Have my best interest in mind, even when I do not. Love me unconditionally, even when I do not know what that means. Never treat me, never teach me a lesson but support me through whatever life brings my way. I love that one. God doesn't teach us lessons. We teach ourselves lessons. The love of God supports us in back into our wholeness. Be my biggest cheerleader. Give me a shoulder to cry on. Have a great sense of humor. Be so accessible that I feel you as a part of me. Give me the courage and strength to show up for life on life's terms. So these are some of the qualities that are the qualities of the divine that we can bring into our lives. So the last uh, phase, the last level of faith is knowing. 
It's a beyond belief. It's not hoping that something's going to show up in our lives that we want. It's knowing that it's already here. And this knowing is a place of consciousness. When we get to a place of consciousness, that's what shows up in our lives. The universe responds to our vibration, to the level of consciousness that we have. So we have a lot of responsibility in this journey of faith. It's because this is the most important. When we have that knowing that God is good, when we have that knowing that God is wanting to give us the kingdom, wanting to bless us, it shows up in our lives. So it's beyond belief. It's beyond faith in a sense that we just know that the presence of God is here now. So let's take a moment to have a little experience of this uh, faith power in our minds, in our bodies, in our hearts this morning. Because also these are a couple of the qualities to developing um, more faith is that we have to move through our opinionated minds, our judgmental, closed minds. We have to open them up. We have to move through our, our closed down hearts. We have to open our hearts to receive this love and this faith or to activate it. So as we do this, I invite you again to breathe, soften your belly, breathe in the breath of God. Mm. And as you do, I invite you to bring your awareness to the center of your brain. From the very top of your head down a little bit into your brain. And imagine the pineal gland there. It's called the pineal gland because it's shaped like a pineapple. It's a little gland in the center of your brain. I want you to imagine a globe of white golden light above you and see that light filtering down into the pineal gland and exiting out through the third eye. So it's kind of an L shape. You're breathing in this light and love of God, seeing it through the pineal gland, and then exhaling out and imagine that energy coming out the third eye. So inhale. I believe in the... I have faith in the goodness of God. Exhale. I have faith in the goodness of God. Inhale. I have faith in the goodness of God. Exhale. I have faith in the goodness of God. And just sit with that with the, for a few moments and practice that on your own. And so with gratitude, we bring our awareness back to this time and space. We thank you, God, for the faith that sets us free. And we pray this and give thanks in the name and in the nature of the indwelling Christ presence. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>